Okay, in high, in high school or also in maybe calculus one or two, you know that for example, if we have given f of x equals x squared plus two, and if I ask you when x equals one, what is f of one? You will tell me that this will be one squared plus two, which is three, right? So what that f does is, suppose, Okay, suppose this one is your domain, this one is your range. Okay, we are quickly reviewing the high school concept. And the function is actually given by x squared plus two. So in domain, if x equals one, then there, your f of x, this function will change this one into three, right? If x equals two, then this function will change two into six, because when you substitute x equals two, it's gonna give you six and so on. What it does is it transform one into three and this f transform two into six. So transformation is kind of, you know. Now let us look at the same idea in case of matrix. What does matrix do is pretty much the same like this what F does, okay? For example, I have a matrix A here, okay? We have X here, so this is my X. And there is matrix A here. If I multiply that X with the, you know, matrix A and X, I'll get B. It works like a machine. It works just like a function, right? So here you have A and you have X here. And then when you multiply, you're gonna get another thing. So what it does is multiplication by A transform X into B. Okay, so this is called transformation. It just transform one to another one. So now, we can consider the matrix also as a function, as a transformation, same like you did in high school. In this case, we will be focusing our attention on matrix as a transformation, matrix as a function in another word. Uh, let's look at this. Couple of words that we need to know. I want you to read this with me, okay? A transformation or function or mapping T from Rn to Rm is a rule that assigns to each vector x in Rn a vector T of x in Rm. The set Rn is called the domain. So for example, notice here, this is my domain and x is coming from that domain. And same like f, we have a T, we represent, you know, it's the same idea. We represent that by T transformation and it gives us, let's say this point, T of X, okay? So if I take another point here, this will give me another point there. If I take another point here, this will give me another point there. And so I have this, you know, this domain and I have this range here. Okay, so notice here I have, my domain is actually a plane. Every single point in the plane can be associated with every single point on this plane. So the domain is this, range is the same plane like this but this plane is actually a part of the larger space, okay? Part of the larger, in this case, part of the larger, um, Q, you know, like uh, parallel of pipe, you can say. It's a three-dimensional figure we, and we are talking about. Then the whole thing is called the codomain, and this plane only is called the range, okay? So domain, codomain, and range, just keep that in mind. 
So our domain is R n. So domain is R n. Co-domain is the whole space R m, for example, and the range is just this part. This is our range. Okay. Now let's look at what what I mean with the example. Let A, we are given the matrix, define a transformation T from R2 to R3 by Tfx equals Ax if X equals this one. So what does that mean? So we want to find the transformation here. So we given t of x equals a of x. So our transformation is actually the matrix, you know, transformation by the matrix, which means a is just write down a, which is 1, 2, 0, 0, 1, 1, and your x is 3 and 1. Can you please multiply and let me know what do you get? So two, five, and one. Two, five, and one. Thank you. Notice that what this A does, what the, you know, A as a transformation, what it does is we have a point X in R2, right? This one is coming from R2. It's a two-dimensional figure, two-dimension is the domain. Now, that matrix multiplication gives us, this one is in 3D, I mean, uh, three dimension, R3. Okay, so our domain is 2D and co-domain is R3. Okay, it said, what, I, what, what it did is like, I took a point here, 2N1, this point right here, you can write that way or you can write as a matrix, 2 and 1, this is the point. And then when I use the A as a transformation, A as a function, what that A did is it actually changed this point here and which is the point 2, 5, 1. All right, that's all about uh, transformation. Now let's practice few more questions. Example two, we are given a matrix, we are given a vector u, we are given a vector b, we are given a vector c, three vectors are given. And the transformation is defined, the function is given this way. What this function does is any point in Rn, it will transform into Rm by this rule, by this function, tfx equals afx, okay? Now part a, find T of U. Okay, let us work on that. So find T of U means, remember T of X is defined by A of X, T of U is defined by A, A U. Okay, this is how it is defined. So that means A is 1, 3, negative 1, negative 3, 5, 7, and u is 2 and negative 1. Can you tell me what do you get? Five one minus nine. Five one minus nine. Part A is done. So find T U the image of U under the transformation T. So if we put U under T, okay, if T is our function, another word, if A is our function, A is matrix as a function, 
and what that matrix does is the image of u means a will transform u a will change u into this point u is actually 2n minus 1 and what a does is it a changes this into that okay now let's look at part b find x in r2 whose image under t is b okay so the question is find x such that t of x equals b in another word what it means is t of x is actually as it's given t of x is given to be ax so it means ax equals b we need to find ax now we have a system of equation right ax equals b means it's a system of equation and if you want to find it then what you can do is there are a couple of ways to do it you can find the a inverse and then solve it but since a is matrix a is not um, is not a square matrix you can't find a inverse so the best way is to consider the augmented matrix in this case okay so to solve this system we need to find the value of x to solve this system consider augmented matrix and change it into epsilon form that's one way of solving the system so the augmented matrix will be a and b so a is 1 3 minus 1 minus 3 5 7 and b is uh, what is b guys b is 3 2 negative 5 3 2 negative 5 okay so now change to a solemn form please and let me know what you get Did you get the same thing? Or you can write this as two in negative one. This is what I got, but I want to check with you guys. Sometimes my calculation may be wrong. I want your help to verify this is the right one. Okay, I trust that uh, all of you got that or if it is wrong, let me know. Otherwise, let's assume that this is the right one and then let's move forward. And in this case, this is your x1, x2. So let us write the general solution.
x1 minus 3x2 equals 3. Uh, 2x2 equals minus 1. Is there any free variable, guys? No free variable, right? Okay, so this gives me x2 equals negative half. And this gives me x1 equals uh, negative half and 3. Is that 1.5? No. Am I right? X1 equals 3 over 5, 3 over 2. So our X is, because we need to find X here. So our X is actually X1 and X2 which is three over two and minus one half. That is your answer. Any questions so far? Are you there? It's so quiet. Is it, did you get the same thing? Yes. Yes. Okay, all right, good. Now let's move uh, forward and part C, what we are supposed to do. Let's look at part C. Is there more than one X whose image under T is B? The question is, is there more x whose image under t is b? In another word, the question, the question is asking us whether there is a unique solution or many solution. That's the question. Okay, it means Is there unique solution that is the question can you tell me what is that is there a unique solution or there are many solutions infinitely many Is there any free variable? Oh. Unique solution. Is there, okay, if there is no free variable means unique solution, okay? Since the system is consistent, and has no free variable, it has unique solution. Only one solution. Unique means there is only one solution. So is there more X whose image under T is B? So there is no more X. No more than one X whose image under T is B. Okay, so the question is asking us whether it's, uh, whether there is any free variable or not. Now let's look at part uh, D.
determine if C is in the range of the transformation T. Okay. D is here. Where is D? D, C, sorry. Determine if C is in the range. If C is in the range of transformation of T, what it means is, if you consider this as a one matrix, this one and this one, you keep them you know, as one matrix and check whether it is system is consistent or not. That's all you're trying to say. So part D, the vector C is in the range of T if C is some image The vector C is in the range of T if T of X, which means C, or this means, or A of X equals C is consistent. Okay, that's another way of asking the same question. Is it consistent? Now let's look at that. So to check whether it is consistent or not, you consider the A for this, consider the augmented matrix. A and C. and check whether it is consistent or not, okay? So that means that is A is, uh, what is A? A is one, three, minus one, okay. A is one, three, minus one, minus three, five, seven, and C is, what is C guys? C is three, two, five. Three, two, five. Okay, change to a seven form. Change to a seven form, and let me know what do you get. Oh, oh, the, oh, the. You see it's three two five or three two minus five? I don't know, three two five I think, isn't it? Three two five. Three two five? Yeah. When I use my calculator, online calculator, it tells me that the Isolon form of this matrix is this one. I want to verify with you guys.
Okay, so it shows that clearly as you can see, this one and this one, you see that last equation gives you zero equals negative 35, which is impossible. Stephanie, what, what do you mean? Okay, so C is not in the range because as you can see, this actually tells us zero equals negative 35 and using our common sense, that is impossible. Therefore, the system is inconsistent meaning C cannot be in the range of T. C cannot stay nicely together with T, you know, because it gives that absorbed result. Okay, so all right, so let's uh, look at one more question. Application matrix transformation have many applications, including computer graphics. And those who have done computer programming, I think we have already done a lot of matrix, uh, you know, a, a lot of concept related to matrix. Okay. If you want to do computer programming in the future, yes, this matrix is extremely important concept, by the way. Okay, let us look at what happens here in this example. We are given a matrix and the transformation is defined this way and U is this one, what happens? Let's look at that, okay? Uh, T of U is defined to be A of U, which means 0 0.5, 0, 0, 0 0.5, and U is eight and six. Can you tell me what do you get here? Four. Four and? Three. Three, okay, thank you. It's just a half, right? It's just a half of this eight and six. All right, now let me look at this uh, in real world application, what happens? Okay, I have eight and six, this is the point that I consider, okay, this is my U, eight and six. And I have a matrix A, which is 0 0.5, 0, 0, and 0 0.5. What it does is it transforms that point into 4 and 3, right there. So this point U transform into this one. Let, let me denote that by U prime, which is uh, 4 and 3. If I take this point, again, it will transform into, you know, into that point. So what happens is every point, the vector here, eight, six, it will becomes half of that. And as if I consider all those points from this one and I draw a line, I get an aeroplane. Can you see that? Nice plane. And if I multiply this plane by this matrix, then what I got is I got a small plane here. The big plane is transformed into a small one by using the matrix multiplication. Can you see what kind, you know, the application here in this, this kind of application in the real world situation? Can you tell me one example? Maybe, you know, you know the photocopy machine, right? You can enlarge, you can 
and make it smaller. So here, whatever I have, I make a copy of it, just half of it in size. And in the photocopy machine, they do the programming, sometimes using the matrix like this. So that every point, if you just press 50% and it will just make it half. If you press seven, you know, 200%, it will enlarge twice. So there will be some kind of matrix and every dot will actually, you know, change this into um, your requirement, whether you are trying to make it smaller or bigger or something like that. So that's one simple example, guys. And we will look at the example if we have time, more time, um, you know, at the end of the class, maybe we'll do some, um, some kind of project work if we have time, but I'm not sure whether we'll be able to do that or not. Now, today we just learned the linear transformation, but we will continue this in our next class, okay? What is linear transformation? We already know transformation. Transformation means it's kind of a function, right? It's just like a function. But what does that word linear means? Okay, here is the definition. A transformation or mapping T is linear. It's said to be linear transformation if it satisfies these two conditions. All right, any transformation, any function that satisfies these two conditions, it's said to be linear. For example, this is the last questions we'll be doing for today. T from real number to real number is a transformation defined by this. Is T a linear transformation? Okay, we only check it, okay? So first of all, let us consider two vectors. But since this is R, it's a real number, you can consider, let, um, R in R, okay? Real number scalar. So given T of X equals two X, this is given. Now I want you to find, to check these two conditions. Let me write T U plus V means there are two vectors and we have the two object here, A plus B equals Let me write this. Given we have t of x equals 2x, this is given. So now if I ask you a plus b here, if I replace x by a plus b, what do you get here? This one, right? So you're going to get 2a plus 2b. Which is actually t of a plus T of B, so they are equal. If you calculate T of A, remember T of X is 2X, T of A will be 2A, and T of B is 2B, we already know that, okay? So they are equal, condition one checks. Now let's look at condition two. T of CU, T of C, U means you can substitute as A or B, doesn't matter. It's just one object, okay, one element from R. So that's gonna give me, can you tell me what that will be? Two X means now this one, this guy here. So two CA, TX, I replace X by CA, you replace that X by CA on the right hand side as well. So you're gonna get two CA since you can write this 2CA as C2A, you can write that way too, which means C, T of A. Okay, it, second condition also checks. Now, since T satisfies both condition, T is linear. That's it. We'll continue this in our next class. If you get it, great. If you don't get it, then we'll continue. We'll practice more questions of this type. Okay, don't worry. 
Okay, guys, if you have any question, let me know. Otherwise, I think we are done for today. I wish you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend and see you next week on Tuesday. You stay safe and healthy. My conundrum is that if I could ask you Thank anything, you, I just... Thank you. Who is that? Okay, his homework will be updated today. Um, I'm not sure from 2D to 3D, but we cannot make transformation from 2D to 3D. Yeah, we'll continue that idea later. We can do that actually. We can transform 2D to 3D. That's that one of the important concepts in computer uh, graphics. Whenever we, when we see your grades, uh, you can see your grade uh, tonight. Well, part one, you can see it, uh, you know, tonight, but part B, it takes a lot of time for me to mark, and I don't know how to give it to you, Wayne. I'm not sure. Okay. Part one, you'll see tonight.